The fourth way that you can make your lead magnet more specific is to answer a specific question. Now, I realize that a lot of the different lead magnet types and examples and ways to bring specificity in that we've talked about thus far are really great if you're selling some type of digital product, right? If you're selling any, any kind of digital product, digital, whether it's B2B or B2C, um, a, a lot of those examples have been more relevant um, there. And, and one of the questions that I get all the time is, you know, what if I'm what if I'm B2B and I'm, I'm more industrial or, or um, you know, I'm in the manufacturing space? But I, look, I don't care what market you're in. If you simply answer the question that your prospects are asking, that in and of itself can be a great lead man. And I'm going to get to this example in just a second, but there's a, another one that's a rather famous example. There's a pool company, a uh, pool builder, that became one of the largest pool builders in the United States of America because instead of putting beautiful pictures of pools all over their website and saying, call us because we'd love to come out and give you a quote, they instead all over their website put answers to questions. And then when it was done, when they had answered people's questions, they said, great, if that answered your question, give us a call, we'd love to talk more. That site became one of the most trafficked websites about pool building. Even people who didn't live in this area were calling this company being like, ah, can you fly over to where I live and give us a quote to build a pool? Simply because they answered specific questions that people were asking. So this will work. I don't care what market you're in. If you're answering specific questions, it will work because you are inherently, if you're answering the questions that people are actually asking and not answering the questions that you wish that they ask or that you hope that they ask or that you maybe think that they ask, but the questions that they're actually asking, if you answer those questions, then you are inherently entering the conversation that is going on in their mind as opposed to trying to start your own conversation. That's exactly what we did with this company here. So this company, um, which we started working with a number of years ago, um, they manufacture industrial uh, fluid filtration uh, equipment and, and specifically the filters themselves. So they, they manufacture and, and, and wholesale all these different types of filters. And their market is wholesalers. They work through a distributed sales force and through wholesalers. They're not direct. They're not a web-based uh, company and certainly not a digital product. And, and this is what their uh, website looked like you know, when we first started working with them, it's like a lot of websites in this space. It had pictures of all their different uh, products that they sold. It was essentially a catalog um, with no real lead magnet. The only lead, lead magnet was call us, right? Call us. That is the um, B2B equivalent of sign up for our newsletter, okay? So they were just saying call us, and they got about six phone calls a day. I want to show you how we, I'm sorry, they got about six phone calls a month. Whew. Six phone calls a month because of this. I want to show you how we were able to bump it up to about six phone calls a day, which is more than six a month. So this right here, about six phone calls a month. Um, this new variation that you see here generated about six per day. And the reason is, is because what we did is we created a lead magnet that answered the most frequently asked question that they received. So when people came to this webpage and they called this number, what everyone asked, almost across the board, what everyone asked is, what's the price, what's the wholesale price of this pleated filter? Or what's the wholesale price of a BR549? What's of this, what's of that? That was the specific question that everyone was asking. So what we did is we simply created a lead magnet that answered that specific question. And that was a wholesale catalog and pricing guide. So this is something that, you know, you're thinking, well, that's not very sexy, right? A wholesale catalog and pricing guide, that's just a list. That's not very sexy. Where's the razzle-dazzle-frazzle? The razzle-dazzle-frazzle comes from the fact that it answers a specific question that they were being asked. Now they knew when they came to this webpage, oh, if I fill out this form, and we ask for everything, first name, company, email address, phone number, if I fill out this form, then I'm going to get an answer to my question, which is, what is the price of the item? Now, of course, when they filled out the form, somebody from the office would call them up and say, hey, we noticed that you just requested our wholesale catalog and price list. We're going to you know, get one of those out to you. But while you wait, was there a specific item that you would like for me to get you a price on so you don't have to wait for the catalog? See, so we still got the phone call. We still were able to do an outbound. It was totally appropriate. And we still got a lot of calls here because people knew that we had the answer to their question. Even people who didn't do this, they still called because they knew that we had the answer to their question. All right, so this is a good example for uh, a manufacturing company. Let me show you one that in a totally different space. Let's talk about somebody who sells basically dating and how to pick up you know, women. So again, couldn't be more opposite than this. 
So this is the original landing page for a website called Double Your Dating, doubleyourdating.com. If you go to it today, you'll find it looks very different than this, original, um, than this original page, but this was the page, simple though it is, that built what eventually went on to become a very successful business and really define a whole industry for better or worse. Um, now, the promise itself was very lacking because it's you're about to learn secrets that most men will never know about women, right? Well, which secrets? You know, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's too broad. It totally lacks specificity. I believe that this worked because of this first bullet point, the kiss test. How to tell if she's ready to be kissed. The kiss test. How to tell if she's ready to be kissed. And I remember talking to the, to the founder of the site and saying, well, why was that what you went with? He said, because that was the biggest question that I got from guys. You know, I'm, I'm nervous to even go out and attempt to meet a, a woman because I don't want to get to the end of the night and I don't want to be like weird and creepy and kiss her too soon, but I don't want to nod and then like miss out on the opportunity to kiss her and her think like that I'm a total prude and, or that I don't like her and not get it. So that was what everybody was asking. That was the question that they were asking. So that's exactly what he answered. So as soon as you opt in, as soon as you opt in, you were taken to a page that looked like this. This is the lead magnet. Part of the reason that I've been saying that the format, the medium of your lead magnet doesn't matter is because it doesn't matter. In this case, the lead magnet is delivered in six paragraphs. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six delivers the lead magnet that was promised over here. That right there delivered the lead magnet. Six paragraphs delivered on the very next page. It's not a downloadable PDF. It's not a video. It's six paragraphs and it's rapidly consumed. So don't get hung up on the media. Get hung up on the promise, okay? And so what he did here is he proceeded to give these poor guys a strategy on how they could know if a woman is ready to be kissed. And I'm going to read this to you, one, because it's mildly comical, but there's an important lesson at the end. By the way, I do not recommend or condone this in any way, shape, or form, but again, I'm going to read it to you because it's funny and there is a lesson to be found. And again, it's only six paragraphs. So feel free to time me, or if you want to pause this and time me and see how long does it take to consume this entire lead magnet. All right, let's go. So how to tell if she's ready to be kissed. I used to have no idea if a woman was ready to be kissed. You know, I could be sitting there talking to her, thinking to myself, Wow, her lips look really nice. By the way, that's so creepy. Anyway, but I didn't know what to do next. This would often leave me kissless, and many times kissless for good as I didn't get another chance, okay? Speaking to a known concern, speaking to a known concern. So here's what I do now. If I've been talking to a girl and I wanna know if she's ready to be kissed, I'll reach over to her and I'll touch her hair while we're talking and I'll make a comment about it. I'll say, your hair looks so soft and just touch the tips. Again, so freaking creepy. All right. Back to this, your hair looks so soft and I'll touch the tips of it. If she smiles and likes this, um, which means she likes creepy guys apparently, but if she smiles and likes this, I'll reach back over and start stroking it again, but this time I'll also glance down at her lips and back up to her eyes a couple of times. If she lets me keep touching her hair, I know she's ready to be kissed. See that? In two paragraphs, he basically gave a strategy. He answered the question, all right? But it didn't stop there. Check this out. By using the kiss test, I've been kind and complimentary, but by being very subtle, I don't actually think that's subtle, by the way. I think that's super creepy and not subtle, but anyway. But by being very subtle about it, I haven't given her anything she can object to. I now, and listen to this, I now have a way of knowing if she's ready to be kissed that never gets me rejected, and I know within five minutes what used to take me hours or days to figure out. Now that is a specific promise. So I submit that had this been redone, right? Instead of it being you're about to learn secrets uh, that most men will never know about women, if it had been instead the kiss test, a rejection free, and I'm just using the copy that's here. I'm not writing new copy. I'm just using what's here. Um, the, the kiss test, uh, a, a rejection free um, uh, way to know if, if any girl is ready to be kissed in five minutes or less. The kiss test, a rejection-free way to know if any girl is ready to be kissed in five minutes or less. I submit that that's a far more compelling lead magnet title than what was here, right? Far more compelling than, than what was here. You still deliver the same thing, but don't miss the bigger point that I'm trying to make here, which is that he simply answered a question. 
He simply answered the question. People opted in to get the answer to the question, and when he gave them the answer to that question, boom, they trusted. They were now moved further down that continuum of belief. Value was delivered. These guys, for better or worse, and my guess is in most of the case it was for worse, these guys believed, hey, if I actually manage to meet a girl, maybe just maybe I can get her to kiss me, right? For better or worse, they believed that, and that belief made them more likely to buy. And as we're going to talk about in just a little, little bit, that's exactly what great lead magnets do. They move people down that continuum of belief, so they feel abundant. They feel like, yeah, this is something that I can do, okay? But we'll talk about that later. Uh, for now, let's move on to the next way that you can add specificity to your lead magnets.